Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress Anxiety and Panic Attacks Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. So thank you for joining me. And if I haven't said it already, Happy New Year to you. Right, it's the 5th of January, so I guess I should stop saying it now, but Happy New Year. Hope that your 2021 is a safe and healthy one now this is going to be a mixture of relaxation and sleep and I'm going to be talking about sleep I'm going to be talking about relaxing and I'm going to be talking about your brain. So I would suggest getting yourself into a comfortable position, lying down or sitting in a comfortable chair that supports your body in the event of you falling asleep. Remembering that if you're lying down, you can move anytime you want. If you need to move to the left of your body or move over to the right side, or even if you feel you need to stand up and stretch or whatever, do what you feel is necessary. Because you may, some people may think, what are, you, what are you talking about? Standing up and stretching. Well, some people listening to this may have physical conditions uh, such as chronic pain or uh, various physical issues, which means that sitting in the same position or lying in the same position for long periods of time may not be appropriate for them so that's why I like to try and accommodate everyone and to point out that there are no rules there are no rules. You don't have to do anything. And I think that's important to be reminded of that. To be able to be in control of what you do because hypnosis is not giving away your control or your power hypnosis isn't giving away anything You don't lose anything with hypnosis. You gain. It's all about gain. You gain something. You gain more control over your own mind and body. You may say, yeah, but what about losing? You lose stress and tension. you let go of that 
you choose to let go of the tension in your body it reminds me a little bit um, of you know those wind up toys that you wind up and it could be I used to have uh, a little dolphin in the bath when I was when I was younger I was about 47 and you'd wind it up and you'd let it go and it would you know swim in the bath until the wind up mechanism had run down and then it stopped but of course it's okay because it was a dolphin so it was fine never had to give it mouth to mouth and it wasn't a real dolphin it was a you know it had a a wind up thing on it I sometimes I think of tension in that way and I know that I'm taking in this scenario as I'm talking I'm probably taking words literally sometimes I do that and it seems to fit for example this may not this term may not be used where you are in the world so you know I'm very aware that a lot of terminology uh, verbally in language that may be normal usage to me you may never have heard of it it was like completely or it may have a different meaning so bear in mind I'm not if I say something and uh, for me it means uh, getting tense and in, in your where you are it means pooping or something then you know just Bear in mind, I didn't. I didn't know that. Okay. So this uh, a term in my culture, which is winding someone up, getting wound up, uh, which means getting stressed, uh, causing someone. So winding someone up would be to cause them distress. And for some reason, causing someone emotional distress is a socially acceptable, fun thing to do sometimes. And when you step back and look at it like that, it seems a bit cruel, actually. But, you know, it's, it's part and parcel of... Uh, growing up I guess and it another word would be teasing somebody perhaps and there's a fine line between teasing one person's being teased is another person's being bullied so you know it can, you know the words and the meaning and the intention and sometimes means nothing when it comes to the recipient experiencing what's happening and being emotionally affected negatively by it but anyway that's that's probably a different podcast altogether so the winding up is in my country or my I say culture because I don't know is whether it's even used in other parts of the country but I think it is you know so winding someone up or being wound up getting wound up is like a literal thing in the, say, in the sense if you've got 
a handle in your back that you turn and wind up and when someone feels says I'm being wound up or I'm wound up it's it's like they've allowed other people to come and turn that key in their back to increase the person's stress levels so it's almost as if people are walking around we're all walking around with these keys big keys sticking out of our backs and people are winding they're continuously winding it up turning the key and the difference between and I don't know why the difference between the the keys in the back of people I know we don't really have keys but as an uh, analogy uh, a lot of us do allow other people or even we may believe that other people have done that to us so we blame other people for our emotional states when we're responsible for our own emotional states no one else but us really as a heck of a responsibility especially when you've lived your whole life believing that other people are responsible for how you feel other people are responsible for the emotions that you experience and then to get told that uh, you know what actually you're responsible for protecting and looking after yourself and actually observing the feelings and it's a reaction and you're responsible for your own reactions it's a very bitter pill I think to to be given you know it's like oh I don't like that I'd prefer to blame other people if that's okay if you don't mind I'd like to continue being a victim I want to just blame other people for everything that I feel and life is easier that way it's very painful but it's, it's easier just to blame other people for everything now some people are to blame that's a distinction I'm not saying oh no one's ever to blame for anything because that would be a lie lots of people are to blame who comes someone comes up to me and punches me in the face randomly I am not to blame for that they're to blame for that they're the one that did it I'm not okay so there's the blame what happens next is both my responsibility and the other person's now if the person walks away you know or if the person continues to attack me that's their responsibility if if I do something then that's my responsibility 
you know, so I'm responsible for my actions in that situation. But in that situation, I would be a victim of a crime. And I think with the whole, the whole like, new age uh, stuff, the word victim is almost... ridiculed a little bit what actually being a victim is a horrific uh, sometimes life changing thing depending on what the crime was so being a victim is being a victim of a crime. And there's a difference. And I say victim of... I know technically bullying isn't necessarily a crime. But I'm classing it as that. It's a crime to me it's a crime against the person to bully them to victim you know to be horrible to someone like extremely that's that's a crime and in some places it is a crime but in general society a lot of people get away with it in the workplace and stuff like that So this key we all really kind of have in our backs which makes us vulnerable and you know what I remember years ago, and I'm going off uh, off topic very slightly, but I'm coming back, so don't worry. I'm not really into art. I'm not. It's it's not. I'm not. I don't think it's a bad thing or a good thing. It just it's not really like I'm talking paintings drawings and stuff like that I can appreciate how amazing it is from a perspective of having tried to do it myself when I was younger and well painting never really did very well with painting and drawing I used to spend hours and hours and hours drawing but I never I didn't have any natural talent there and so I don't I, I think really I don't appreciate art in the way I don't have that type of mind I guess to appreciate it maybe I don't understand a lot of it you know for whatever reason I'm, I don't care really just it's just not something that I'm that into or into at all although I've been in some art galleries and I think the thing I quite like is the historical thing because it's almost really with some art galleries it's like going and looking at photographs of people and activities and historical events 
long before photographs were even invented you know so for long before cameras were uh, used so for me that's kind of how I see the uh, a lot of the paintings anyway it's a reason why I mention this is years ago when I worked in a place an art gallery opened up in the same building and I knew the people that ran the art gallery so I, I went up you know to have a look because I had a new a new load of stuff in there and I would check it out you know every time they had a new show in I'd check out the new stuff just to see if I could get any kind of spark of interest in art rarely happened I like the nudes you know if there's uh, some of the yeah some of the naked women and stuff but uh, those that had at least two eyes but there was this exhibition that really caught me and it had an effect on me and this is connected to the idea of having the key on the back on her back making us vulnerable making us seen as it were you'd see someone wouldn't you you'd really notice them if they had a big key on their back that could be wound up And this art gallery uh, exhibition was various different events of aggression. So battle scenes and other things that were things that would be unpalatable generally outside of the art gallery. You know, it's almost... Uh, art galleries get away with some quite horrible stuff sometimes uh, depicted wars and things so this that's what this was doing it was depicting various situations including one on one humans doing uh, being nasty to each other and, but there's one particular war scene that really caught my attention people you know there's people sitting on horses and they were all fighting and they were all naked and it looked ridiculous because they were all naked and they were all vulnerable and not one of them looked tough they were all men and not one of them looked tough when they're naked because a ball bag stops that the male genitals take away any kind of um, well, it almost makes it funny it takes away the seriousness of the thing and the man standing there with his completely naked is very vulnerable and I guess we all are if we're naked but to you know a man and a man or men going to war naked they wouldn't feel safe and it was something I think they had some pictures of weddings funerals stuff like that where everyone was naked and it almost 
made me think about the first of all how serious we take ourselves as humans sometimes but then if you look if you strip away the clothes the uniforms the costumes the pretense you just see a naked body it changes how they change how you perceive them doesn't it I mean if you had a head of state president, prime minister king, queen, whatever whoever was at the head of state coming on television doing a, a speech about the whatever news, you know the whatever big things happening at the time and they're sitting there on a chair no table starkers looking into the camera talking about how we need to uh, we're going to get through this and how you know all this whatever whatever the the it could be yeah I don't want to say names but it could be anyone prime minister president female male some politicians, whoever. Well, you imagine a, a a TV show, you know, where the the we have a thing called Question Time, where there's lots of politicians and maybe some famous people come on and argue out the events and issues of the day. For the audience, when we had audiences back in the past, the uh, some of them would get angry and shout and stuff so imagine if they were all naked the audience and the guests how would they be able to have that argument how would they even be able to act the same so you know they might be feeling really confident when they get to the television studio and you know, know that what they're going to say and they're going to come across really well and it will help their future political life blah blah and then they get told oh yeah by the way it's, you've got to be naked so it changes things and that just made me think you know how could there be a war how could there be fights how could there be as much aggression if people walked around naked it would change it just changed the perspective of the whole thing made it almost absurd however I'm not saying that we should walk around naked because I don't want to <laughs> thank you very much no that would not be fair on anybody else but if I could choose those I'd like to walk around naked um, don't judge me on that because you'd, we'd all like the opportunity to do that in your mind if you could so uh, I'd like to, I'd, there's five people I'd like to see naked we've all got that in our head it's like okay I'll have him I'll have him I'll have her even if it's just a celebrity or um, a teacher or, or the bus driver, who knows, just for a laugh. Ronald McDonald. <laughs> so, Prince Charles. So, I... It got me thinking, it's a long time ago, the idea changed the situation. Uh, the idea of people just sitting there on horses without any clothes on, watched, you know, going to war. 
almost oblivious to their vulnerability because you wouldn't go to war like that <laughs> it's, you know especially if you know the other army are going to have weapons and they're all going to be wearing armour but flipping on its side the people that are naked are vulnerable but at the same time there's an honesty there you can't na- you can't hide so if you if you're naked you can't hide what you look like you can hide your personality you you know you can hide anger you can hide hatred and all that sort of stuff so people may not know what you really like or just may not know that part of you we've all got you know stuff haven't we that we don't share but when you're naked you can't hide anything of course you can hide what you're thinking but even that will come obvious to others at times So the idea that we've got this key in the back of us that winds us up but allowing other people to also do it. So it's an automatic wind up as well in the sense of as our stress levels go up as we're getting more and more annoyed at something the it's almost it's automatically turning to its right winding up and other people can just come along and do turn it again so you might have been out for the day by the time you get home you're just completely to the limit tension wise and stress wise And then the unwinding doesn't happen automatically the way it does with that wind up dolphin in the bath or the wild the the wind up duck. Oh, I'm trying to think of other things that wind up when I was a kid loads of stuff wound up which is probably how that term came into use because my generation and the generations earlier a lot of things wound up I mean the most obvious thing would be a a clock or a watch I say obvious to me maybe not obvious to uh, someone who's maybe 20 has never had a watch that winds up they do still exist I think but that's all that existed when I was under the age of 10 and then the digital clocks came along and and yeah so it's it's all changed so I'd wind up the watch every night pretty much before going to bed that seemed to be the standard thing and then it just wind down throughout the next 24 hours and it's I guess it's all to do with springs and tension and stuff I don't know I don't know much about the insides of a watch
but it would gradually unwind itself over you know that period of time now the dolphin in a bath the plastic dolphin that winds up you wind it up and you let go and straight away it starts to unwind which is what causes the flippers to work and then it unwinds completely letting go completely of that stress and tension and it you know and then it just that's it done it might take 30 seconds it might take a minute it might take 15 seconds it depends but it unwinds at the same pace every time now often our winding up system doesn't unwind naturally or automatically so it needs a little nudge needs a little uh, change to it and when you're thinking about that idea that you can allow yourself to unwind just thinking about it is the equivalent of doing it see with the dolphin in the bath you wind it up and as soon as you take your finger off it starts to unwind with an old watch you'd wind it up and as soon as you two took your fingers away it would start to unwind but very very slowly maybe over you know 24 hours if that's how often it needs to be wound up your body and your mind with those stress levels also need to be unwound you need to allow that automatic unwinding mechanism to be in place and embedded in fact you could put a different winder in to your back you could change it you could choose to change it with the clock uh, or the the watch which slowly unwinds but over a very slow period of time or you could choose to put in that that winder mechanism from the dolphin that I mentioned the little you know toy dolphin that's in the bath or a little toy duck in the bath again or there's so many different toys I don't know 
what the situation is these days but when I was younger there's lots of different versions of the same thing winding it up and then as soon as you let go it unwinds some jewellery boxes where they're musical and you wind them up and you let go and the, there's like a ballerina and music and things like that it's the same kind of mechanism and some unwind at different you know different levels of speed so what you could do if you choose to replace your current winder system with the dolphin from the bath that winder system so that if someone you know if you feel that you're so you continue for whatever reason to allow other people to grab hold of that handle and wind you up winding you literally winding you up then with the dolphin winder it means that you will automatically unwind as soon as the person takes their hand off of the key which also means that your stress levels can never from now on ever raise to the level that they've been before I quite like that idea of constantly unwinding because of course we wind ourselves up as well when we think about things that maybe we have no control over It's a nice idea when you think that even when we maybe wind ourselves up by worrying or being concerned about something or we, you know regretting or any other kind of negative thoughts could increase the tension in our body and mind which means that we're winding ourselves up but now as soon as you let go you go back to feeling really loose really calm really relaxed and what you can do if you choose you can remove the key from your back forever get rid of that key remove it as 
so the no one else has control or power over your feelings and it changes how you feel changes your perspective and you feel lighter as a person feel lighter inside you feel relaxed in your body and your mind because you know that whatever happens from now onwards you will release where he was where you were how you've been you release that continuously being released you focus noticing the safety and relaxation so peaceful so very peaceful and safe you feel so safe 